Jordan Peterson there, you have Ben Shapiro, you have Matt Walsh, you have Candace Owens, all, all of these people. And Candace Owens has been very good. Yeah, She's so, been pretty good. So for, for a while now, the Muslims, uh, the Muslim youth in particular, uh, were looking at these uh, channels or looking at these people as, you know, people who are probably more balanced and more nuanced in their approach, when it's, especially when it comes to conservative values like, you know, uh, following tradition and you know has that been your experience here in pakistan is that what you think for the last i would say maybe three four years sure uh, but recently that has changed so the experience has been that these people are uh, you know hearing it from you know as we keep hearing this gora complex term right so mm. when when people in pakistan for example or in the arab world for so example, they, explain it to the english audience yeah so it? basically gora complex is when uh, us brown people mm. living in Pakistan, India, uh, and what have you, um, are living in that post-colonial mindset sure. where you're impressed by uh, anything that is done by the white man. So yeah. Gora is, basically means white man. Mm. So the white man complex is that you still ha somehow think that he was your savior. Mm. He was your mm. uh, the only bastion of hope that you ever saw. And, and so you're always looking up to them as if the truth is coming from that side. Although from an Islamic perspective, we know our truth comes from the Quran, the Sunnah, all of these things. But then looking at these people, then you have this kind of this awe or this admiration. Now, having that uh, as the baseline, when you had most of the media, which is heavily left wing, I would say, you know, the, the feminist narrative, the LGBT narrative, the what are your pronouns narrative, all of that stuff. And if you were to even slightly criticize it and test it, you know, you would find a lot of backlash. So people like, for example, Andrew Tate, for example, you, you have uh, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, all of these people, they, it seemed like it's the first time somebody's now challenging these narratives openly, publicly and yeah. criticizing. So naturally, they found a lot of, um, you know, uh, support and sympathy from the Muslim side, uh, who are the English speakers from the Muslim world. They, they actually thought, okay, finally, we have a Gora now, who is talking about our issues for the first time. And so now it's really... The, I think that's a brilliant analysis. Yeah. So now they are coming for our rescue. So, hey, hey look, <laughs> we have somebody who now represents us for the first mm -hmm. time. And so this <laughs> begs another question, mm -hmm. which is that what kind of intellectual decline has the Muslim Ummah been suffering yes. that we have to now resort to people like Jordan Peterson mm. and Ben Shapiro mm. and take it with a pinch of salt. But yes, now we say no, but there are so many positive things that are being said. And so even now, yes, the, the numbers have dropped and everything, but I think it will still take some time before it really sinks in that, you know, our values are coming from some place entirely different. And so, yes, there might be people out there who... Uh, talk a lot of, uh, you know, uh, stuff which is basically common between us and the conservatives or e even if it's, for example, left-wing people, we, we might have some similarity with them as well on certain issues and certain topics. But the thing is that where do we drive our um, base from and why is it, the main question is, why is it that in the Muslim world, or maybe it's my impression, in the no, Muslim yeah. world, yeah. there's a kind of like there was a a thirst for, yes. or rather a vacuum created in the in intellectual s sphere and the in intellectual realm mm. that we had to depend on the likes of uh, the people just mentioned. I think absolutely the Goro complex is the diagnostic here yeah. um, for the most part. Um, and the Goro complex is not built upon a complete set of lies. There's yeah. a few truths in there True. which make the Goro complex seductive to people like yeah. that. So let, let's say, for example, the infrastructure of the West. Mm. You can't be honest with yourself and be in Western Europe or, mm. uh, you know, America, United States of America, and then come to a large part of the Muslim world and look at the infrastructure and make a comparison and say, well, mm. our infrastructure is better. Mm. Okay. So there's, that gives them a little bit of a credence. Okay, so they've got better infrastructure than us. Um, the West is outperforming the Muslim world in certain areas, which, for example, they're outperforming the Muslim world in science. Mm. There's un undoubtedly, in inventions the last 100 years, they're outperforming them. Mm. In technology, they're outperforming them. Uh, so th these are generalizations, but for the most part, there, there's some truth in that. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of truth in that, in fact. And so, especially when it comes to science and technology and infrastructure and the post-colonial reality, the Muslim is not going to sit critically and think to themselves, Okay, well, let's take a look at this because for the majority of our history, mm. we've been a superpower. Mm. Like, if we consider 100% as a timeline mm. from, um, you know, 631 or whatever, mm. uh, from 11 AH when the Prophet ﷺ died until yes, yes. 2024, 
the Muslims have either been the superpower or one of the superpowers mm. for about 90% of its history. Mm. So this is a point of decline mm. and uh, or this is a point of weakness in the historical timeline. This is our weakest moment. And this doesn't indicate that we're upon falsehood and it doesn't indicate that, um, you know, th that if you've got money, then you've got truth, for example. Th that kind of reasoning is not going to be had. Mm. And there's an ayah in the Quran, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُ Mm. Which is in chapter 60 of the Quran, Surah Al-Mumtahana. Oh God, this is a dua, do not make us a tribulation for those who have disbelieved. Well, Ibn Kathir mentions in this, his tafsir, mm. he mentions by, make, by, def, by um, making us be defeated by them. Because if we're defeated by the disbeliever, they will think it is where, was their disbelief mm. that made them be us. So now that we're lagging behind on certain mm. key areas, mm. okay, um, it's tempting for everyone to think it must be due to the fact that they're liberals and they're progressives and whatever. And so, like you said, uh, the correlation causation thing, it's not correlation, it must be causation, mm. which is a fallacy. It's, it's mm. a fully fledged fallacy. It's a mm. logical fallacy. The richer you are, the more right you are. Yeah. It's a fallacy. Mm. But it's a, it's a strong psychological situation. And um, it's mentioned the Quran. Mm. It's mentioned the Quran, and I was thinking about this uh, just yesterday. In fact, in Surah Al Zukhruf, there's a few ayahs that g give this Gora complex mm. um, a bit of texture and a bit of historical context, and also a bit of um, psychological understanding. One of them is. وَكَذَلِكَ مَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِي قَرْيَةٍ مِنْ نَذِيرٍ إِلَّا قَالَ مُتْرَفُوهَا إِنَّا وَجَدَنَا آبَاءَنَا عَلَى أُمَّةٍ وَإِنَّا عَلَى آثَارِهِمْ مُقْتَدُونَ Okay, this is the first, this is one ayah. Mm. Which is that we have not sent a prophet to a town except that the wealthy ones among yeah. them said that we have been sent, uh, uh, that we were certainly upon the tradition of our forefathers and we were going to follow them. Mm. In the same surah, and this is an ayah I was thinking about recently. Very interesting. Allah says in the Quran about Pharaoh, "Fastahafa qawmahu fa'atau." This is a very unusual situation mm. because some because it, some people use it as, as Egyptians to say, mm. "Look, you you guys need an authoritarian leader because you've <laughs> always been like that. You need someone to humiliate you so that you can be put in place." Yeah. But the, the the ayah says he. Humiliated his people, so they, so they obeyed him. Obeyed him. Yeah. So, what it is is that because he, if you look at the ayahs before, he says, "Alaysa li mulku Misr, wa hadhi al anharu tajri min tahti, afala tubisrun, am ana khairun, am hadha aladhi huwa mahin wa la yakadu yubin." That I am, I have the rivers of Egypt running below me. Look at my infrastructure. Yeah. Look yeah. at the look at the infrastructure that I have. Look, I have the greatest civilization yeah. here. Hadil Anhar, Tajri Min Tahti. I'm standing and I'm overseeing all of this great infrastructure. Yeah, subhanAllah. He goes, Who's better? Me? Now he's referencing status and, yeah. and education. Mm -hmm. Or this guy who can't even speak because mm -hmm. Moses had a bit of a stammer. Yeah. So he said, Who me who's an articulate, educated at the higher classes? Mm -hmm. Who's better? You tell me. My status or his status? So he referred mm. to status, socioeconomic mm. status and infrastructure. Mm. That's how he made his argument. Mm. And effectively, the Gora complex relies upon those two very human mm. psychological things, which since the time of Pharaoh were mm. being used. Mm. A reference to worldly success. And Qarun is another example in the Quran, but we can't go into all of these examples. But there are many examples in chapter number 28, Surah Al-Qasas, you can look at that. So, in Qarun kana fi min khawmi Musa fabagha alayhim. You can check the ayahs. That he was also a man, uh, very rich, and the people looked at him and they wanted to copy him and so on. So what I'm saying is, the root cause is this false idea that, okay, the more money these people have, mm. the better infrastructure, it means they must be on the truth. Mm. That's why they're looking to people, and the, you know, people, they've got great education. Mm. Um, this man, he was teaching in Harvard, he's a PhD, he's mm. blah, blah, blah. It's all those things which are psychological, mm. which is why I did the thing I did with Piers Morgan. I said, uh, refer to me as an Oxford grad, because I understand yeah. that people are going to, okay, it's, 
It's a weakness of human beings. Mm. And at that point, I needed to take every advantage <laughs> that I could take. Yeah. Because instead of looking at me as a thug, they saw me as an educated person. Mm. I think that's a very valid point that you mentioned. And I think uh, one of the criticisms you might get from maybe the liberal side or maybe those people who um, don't understand uh, al-wala wal-bara or maybe ashidda wal al-kuffar or uh, Sometimes when you do talk with a lot of passion and I would say with a lot of uh, energy to people like Ben Shapiro or for example somebody uh, like uh, the atheist who debated in uh, South Africa, mm. uh, people might say, but this is not how Dawa is supposed to be done. But I think I can relate to and I can understand where you're coming from. But I think I'd hear it from you because how would you answer a person when they say, but if you have to brother present Islam to people, why can't you be just humble and gentle and you know loving and caring and you know give them an olive branch to hold and then you can give them your dawah? I would want to know why he's saying that. Look, mm. if, if he's a person like yourself, mm. who I can see doesn't really have a Gora complex at all, mm. zero, you know, and he's very uh, comfortable in his own flesh, mm. and he says, look, you went a bit too far here. Mm. I'll take it very seriously because mm. I'll say, okay, this guy doesn't have any issues, mm. you know. But if it was a guy that I can see, I can sniff the Gora complex mm. coming out of his pores, <laughs> then I know why he's saying that because yeah. he wants me to be like him. He wants me to appease yeah, the liberals. Mm. So I, I have to make a psychological assessment. If, mm. it's a, if it's a close person who I know is comfortable in their own skin mm. um, and they're true Muslims and stuff like that, and they're making that. To be honest with you, I can take take the advice because sometimes I do go too far. Mm. But if it's somebody who's reeking of the Goro complex mm. and he's got an inferiority, um, compounded inferiority complex, yeah. and he's coming with that, I know what's motivating him. Yeah. He wants a version of Islam mm. which effectively tells the white man everything he wants to hear. Mm. I mean, I can't provide that, I'm afraid. You're going to have to go to somewhere else. Yeah. And I, I can probably wager that the so-called white man, I'm not, when I say white man here, I'm not talking in the, the color of the skin. Yeah. I'm talking about a Western man. I should just yeah. say Western man. Yeah. A Western liberal, for example, right? Yeah. You know, I can, I can tell you, they might not like me, many of the Western liberal atheist types. Mm. But in a sense, they have to respect me. Mm. In, a, in a sense, I'm not saying they... They, they, they respect me as a person, but in a sense, they have to respect at least my consequences. Mm. My intellectual, my conversational, my physical consequences, mm. or a combination of all three. Yeah. But I would rather be in a position like that than be in a position where I'm some kind of like, you know, under the wing of somebody or having to appease somebody, have to defend myself or explain. Mm. I mean, I'm exhausted of justifying myself, man. That's wonderful. I'm exhausted of it. Now, I don't mind doing it to Muslims who have doubts and stuff. I have no issues at mm. all. But me having to explain and justify and this is exhausting process. Mm. All just to explain who I am and how, why do I have to do anything like this? You know, mm. they let them explain themselves. You know what mm. I mean? Yeah. So uh, I think at the end of the day, the Muslims are tired now, bro, because yeah. we're we're a big and strong people. Mm. Pakistan's a country of 250 million. Yeah. We were talking about the infrastructure, and I've made this point many times, and you've heard it already. But if Pakistan was a country in Europe, it would be the strongest country in Europe. We talk about how okay, the clean streets and the tall buildings. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, sorry to say, it, there's no country that has the power of Pakistan in the mm. entire of Europe, the entirety of Europe. Europe. Mm. The only thing that can compare in the West, in the whole West, with Pakistan is America. Mm. Canada can't compare. They can only compare in obviously geographic size, but apart from that, they're a small nation of 30 million people. So there is no country that is as strong as Pakistan in the entire West except for the United States of America. Mm. That's the truth. Mm. You can make an argument for Germany, but I've seen it. It's basically an American outpost now. Mm. Um, and uh, I don't think the people there are willing to fight in the, way, the same way that the people in Pakistan are willing to fight. And you can make a case for the United Kingdom, but once again, it's, it's now the people that are in it are liberals and they, they don't have the spirit to fight in the same way as maybe they used to 50 or 100 years ago. So mm. Pakistan would be the most dangerous country if it was a country in Europe. Mm. No one looks at that and says, well, I want to be a Pakistani. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you really had to trade it, like, like if we really think about it, right? If someone said, press this button, we remove your military power. Mm. You'll have the same power as Norway yeah. or Sweden or Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to have clean streets and tall buildings. Yeah. No one in Pakistan, they'll say, I'll live in the worst pollution, yeah. which is the worst here. In yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> I'll live in the worst pollution, but I will not remove my power. Mm. That's really what it is. Would you ever trade? Do you think I'm right about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. because there's a pride that people take from the fact that, okay, we've got a strong country here. Yeah. 
You know, we've got weapons in this country. We've got people. We've got military, which is, yes, okay, you can say whatever you want and criticize the army all yeah. you like, but at least it's there. Yeah. All it takes is one person at the top to change this few things and everything, the whole military complex becomes the most formidable, for, formidable force in the entire Muslim world. Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry to say we have to look at the positives as well. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of positives of Pakistan and other and other parts of the world in the Muslim world. Yeah, so I can uh, easily relate to when you say that you know uh, you don't have to explain yourself to anyone when you're uh, dealing with people who are you know really ashidawal al kuffar you know that type yes. of narrative when they're really coming up to you as aggressors and trying to belittle or malign or mock or ridicule or scoff or give you the gora complex you know try to try to come from a, from a higher place of some you know. Uh, 